read Matthew 25, 10. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. May God add blessings to the reading of his word. Now, for a little while, I want to speak on the wedding garment. For the wedding supper. Now, the way we dress for any occasion differs with the type of activity and the type of occasion. Looking around, I see men in jackets, men in suits, ladies in costumes. Why they are ever dressed like that is because of the function and the occasion and the activity that is taking place. Tomorrow, the same people you meet one working out there will be having an overalls. One working out there will be putting on gambles. One working out there will be putting on tattered clothes. Why? You dress yourself in line with the occasion and the function. And we know as the bride of Jesus Christ, as we see from this message now on, we have to dress up for the occasions that lays ahead of us. That is the wedding supper, which will be my next message. Now we are being dressed up for the wedding supper. There is a special dress, special garment we have to put on for the special occasion. Unless and until you are dressed in that wedding garment, then you won't be a candidate of the wedding supper. You saw the scripture said, go and call them from the byways and from the streets, from the dark corners. It says, both bad bad and good and bring them. And the scripture, the scripture says the house was full of the guests. So the bad and the good you will see how they managed to enter in. It was because they had a wedding garment. So the qualification of entering is the wedding garment. Though so you come bad or good by the qualification of the world, but you have to pass your entrance test. And the entrance test is to put on the wedding gown. There is no wedding that can be performed without the bride having the gown. She has to be dressed up for the occasion. The woman, the church, has to be dressed up on that day in that white garment, spotless, dressed for the occasion. Or else, Questions will fly all over. So we see from the scriptures that we have heard that Matthew 25, 10, we have been going in and around chapter 25. All the 10 virgins, five foolish and five wise. We see that the climax of it all, all the virgins were waiting, but when the bridegroom came, some did not have the oil, which is the Holy Spirit. But five had the Holy Spirit. And the five had the Holy Spirit entered into the wedding. Entered to join up with the groom. But the other five were cast out into outer darkness. Just like those 
who were invited in Matthew 22 for the wedding supper. Those who had the wedding gown entered in. Those who didn't have were closed out into outer darkness. And we saw that that wedding garment, that oil, is the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. That's the wedding garment. That's what qualifies you to enter for the occasion. Our way together. So we see here the state of preparedness, I said. To go into the wedding supper was determined by the wedding garment which is the Holy Spirit. The state of preparedness, whether you were ready or, or not ready to go into the wedding supper. Now, the invitation is one thing. But to enter in for the celebration and to eat the food is yet another. Yes, you have to be invited. But you have to qualify to enter in. You remember with this king we invited. When he sent in cards. When the time came, many did not come. That's why he says now go into the byway. Go into the dark places. Go to the good and the bad. Invite them in. Invitation by compulsion. We have already seen that going through the different examples in the message of the hour. Congressman Upshaw. Rosella, many of those who came by compulsion with elements, some were drug addicts, chain, some were, were, were chain smokers, some were bound to the wheelchair, but their situation compelled them to come into the meeting of the prophet, and right there, they also received their salvation. Hallelujah. So right there, what do we see? that the state of preparedness to go into the wedding supper was determined by the wedding garment, which is the Holy Spirit. For many are called, but few are chosen. Many were called, others for some reason did not. Many were called, and some even came, but they wanted to enter through the wrong way, and they were thrown out. Because what gains you access to the wedding supper is the wedding garment. And the wedding garment is the Holy Spirit. That was the oil for the five wise virgins. So, Matthew 25, 10 says, And while they went to buy, to buy what? Oil. The bridegroom came and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. The marriage supper. And the door was shut. Now, that's where we draw our parallel from. Going into Matthew chapter 22. Now, the wedding garment, Matthew 22, Matthew 22, verse 2 says, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a king which made a marriage for his son. Now, a marriage consummates in a celebration. A time of joy. A joyous mood all over. For those who were invited and agreed. For those who were given the card and qualified to enter in. So a king had actually prepared a marriage for the son. Then he sent his servants and said the wedding is ready. But they which were beaten were not worthy. And you see what counted them unworthy. Some turned down the invitation. Some did not come by the uh, channels of the card, the invitation. Some tried to enter the other way. But there was only one channel of entrance. That is the door. 
which Christ says, I am the door. So we see right there, verse, uh, verse uh, 9 says, Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as you shall find bid to the marriage. Now it goes on and on and on and on and on and on. Now, so he tells them to go to the hedges, the highways. Go to the outcasts, say the prophet referring that scripture. Bring in lost souls. No matter how humble. Pull out the blind. You see now the examples. Bartholomew. The examples. Congressman Absho. Oh, Rosella. You see all fallen nighting care. Pull out the blind, the lamb, and afflicted. Compel them, says the prophet there. And we see how Brother Bram says his group was mainly the lamb, the sick, and the afflicted. Unlike the other evangelist groups, since you come to his meeting, he's so full of that wheelchairs, everything. God compelling them by their situation. Amen. Amen. So you don't qualify to go for the wedding supper because you are a good man, because you go to church, because you preach, because you talk good. You don't qualify, my brother. All those things are all right. But you have to qualify. We see how you qualify. We know we are getting ready to go to the marriage. The bride is getting ready. Amen. Amen. So he says, verse 10 of 22, so those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. God does not just call the good. That's why you cannot go before God and stand with your goodness. No, it's not your goodness. Brother, you don't go and stand with your badness. It is both bad and good bring them. And there is going to be a process which will make the good and the bad one. And it will make them look as one and the same in the eyes of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So he says, verse 10, Sorry, I, I think I'm through the... And the wedding was finished with guests. 11. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not a wedding garment. That's where I take my subject from. The wedding garment. For the marriage supper. Mm. He saw... Uh, a man which had not a wedding garment. He saw a group which did not have oil. And what happens when he saw sin that? And he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither? not having a wedding garment. And he was speechless. And whoever had to enter, something had to happen before entering. And if you would be found without a wedding garment, it will show you did not enter the right way. If you would be found in there without oil in your vessel, it meant you had taken the shortcut because that was the basis of your entrance into the marriage supper. Are we together? Amen. Verse 13, then said the king to the servants, 
Like anybody else who was invited, some who came through the right channels, but there was a man who did not enter through the right channels. I suppose he was also seated at the table. And the one who entered through the right way was also seated. But when the host came in, there was supposed to be a common denominator of them all. He was supposed to see them dressed in white, all of them. Dressed in a particular wedding garment, all of them. And how he singled out that only one man was because the man was not dressed for the occasion. Hallelujah. So he saw this man. He says, how did you come in? Why he asked that question is, if he had come in through the door, that's where the wedding garment was being given. He should be putting on a wedding garment. But the fact that he was in, and he didn't come through the, uh, the he, 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 didn't, he was not dressed up in the wedding garment. It means either he went through the window, or he went through the roof, and he went through maybe through a crack. That was not official. He missed out an integral part of his life. He missed out an experience that was needed for him to be able to be a candidate of the wedding supper. Hallelujah! Oh, I feel okay. good, my brother. Don't miss out on that, my brother. That's what Cain missed out. That's what Abel got. The integral part that you should not miss. Which, uh, which uh, 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 Cain said, I don't mind about that. Uh, and yet his brother said, I want it. That's the part the whole of Jericho missed. But Rahab and her family with the red flag got. And when the walls were crumbling, it's only their house. It's only their family that survived because they were living under the token. And I'm saying this morning, my brother, don't miss out that integral part that you need to be in the marriage supper, that you need to go into the rapture, that you need for the celebration that is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah! Don't miss out. Don't take chances. Make sure you are filled of the Holy Spirit. But when he comes in, he says, man, how have you come in? Why are you here? You might say, but why asking me when there is all these others? But the host was pressing his argument on the protocol that was stated for all the guests like they normally do. If you don't have a card, don't come for the celebration. You have to show your card. And then they say, yes, you can come in. So this man, if he didn't have a card, it meant very well. He sneaked in somehow. And he was seen that what he was dressed in was totally different from the rest. Oh, my brother, why didn't he see that he was the old one out? My brother, we are both human here. You won't know what's in my heart. I don't know what's in your heart. But the Holy Spirit is an experience that you know yourself. You yourself know it. Others might not know it. But you know I have the Holy Spirit. So this man could see could not see his difference. He thought he was like the other brother. He thought he was like the other sister. But when the horse came, he saw that this man was not fit to be in there. By the way he was dressed, he did not have the wedding coming. Hallelujah. You see that, my brother. Then said the king to the servants, 
Bind him. Hand and foot. Take him away. Cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. But above the ten virgins, the foolish virgins, they were closed out. There was crying, there was weeping out there. Then verse 14 says, For many are called, but few are chosen. Too many, the cards went, but it's a few that went in. You see that, my brother? Many are called, but few are chosen. And Brother Brown says, It's by election which comes by the full knowledge of God. Why, brother, his elective love elected you. And that's why you receive the Holy Spirit. That's why you are craving for the command. You are craving to be dressed up. We always want to, we always see, especially women, when they are going for a wedding, they say, what is the color of the wedding? What is the color? They want to be dressed up. What is the color for the suit? They want to be dressed up for the occasion. You take your time, brother, to dress yourself for the occasion. The occasion of the marriage supper is around the corner. Are you dressed up for it? Hallelujah. Are you ready for the supper? For many are called, but few are chosen. Amen. Amen. Now, I read this quotation. I'm picking uh, uh, this quotation. The prophet says, how beautiful that parable was taught of the wedding supper. He found one there without a wedding on. Come and on. Why? That's very typical. In the oriental times, when they give a supper out or something another, the bridegroom had to finish the robes. That's the way it is in this affair too. The wedding supper we are going to. The bride finishes the robes. When you wear it, it's not the girl who buys the gown. It's not the girl who looks for the material. But it's the boy, the groom. Because he is preparing his wife for the marriage supper. Preparing his wife for the wedding. I was talking to Marian and uh, Brian. With Brother Mushori, they are just about to wed, maybe is it next weekend, out in the boardroom there. Then we sing, is, 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 is the gown there? And then he says, Brian says, I've already seen some place that I have to check. He says, from there they were going to check. Why was he answering? And not the girl was not answering. It's because it's the duty of the groom to prepare his bride, to make sure she is ready for it. So for the wedding supper, for the marriage supper, is the groom it's responsibility to make sure you are dressed up right. You don't give yourself the Holy Spirit, but it's God who gives you the Holy Spirit. He has to dress himself, to dress you up for the occasion. But you should, it's you to try and fit yourself. See where you need adjustment. See where you need to adjust. Because the scripture says, the bride has made herself ready. She makes herself ready by the materials provided by the groom. So he is the bride of Jesus Christ. We are making ourselves ready by the materials that is his word. By the materials that is the message of the hour. We are making ourselves ready this morning as you are preaching about it we are making you ready the word is making you ready the word is dressing you like brother Branham after seeing that sword in Sabinion Canon when he says Lord help me to dress
dress up this bride with this sword, with this word, with this wedding command. We are dressed up for the occasion. Brother, are you dressed up for the occasion? Are you dressed up for the occasion? That's the way it is in this affair too. The wedding supper that we are going to. It means you have to be in uh, dressed up right. And then the bridegroom hired a man to stand at the door. He sends him card. Then he hires now a man to stand at the door. And everybody that had an invitation come at the door. Poor or rich, any kind, they put this robe around them. When they were in, they were all alike. He says, I like that. That's why there he says, bring the good and the bad. They won't end in because they are good or they are bad. But by the qualification which will cause them to end in, do you have the cut? And normally, you find when you send out cards for the wedding, he says, strictly by invitation. But there is people who don't understand many times. He says, ah, I cannot. Those are what we call gate crushers. You crush the gate in order to come in. Don't go where you are not invited. You go where you are. When somebody waits here, if he doesn't invite you, he go. It's his, it's his prerogative. Yes. He knows why he's not called me. And not with any bad feelings. I will remain with love. With you cannot be invited you to all the weddings. Especially in these times of Corona, you cannot go So you go by invitation. I remember one time we planned here for a wedding of around 800. We around 800. And then we ended up with 1,500 candidates. Like when we used to be in Mutare, we would know if it's somebody waiting from Sakuva prepared for, for Havok. The whole of Sakuva comes. Even those who were not invited. Brother, we went to the what you call it, Paklaba. It was dark with the people. Uninvited. Until instead of 800 plates, we ended up with 1,500 plates. Now when you come in, and they ask you, how did you come in? Do you have a card? And you don't have. Then they will know you have gained the entrance through the wrong way. Do you see that, my brother? So, when you're invited, you come by invitation. You come at the door. Poor or rich, dress whichever way. When you come and you are dressed by the robe and you enter in, you all look alike. So, invited, bad or good, the robe changes you to look alike. So that man who was discovered inside did not look alike with the rest of the people to show that he didn't come through the door. Now Christ said, I'm the door. That is John 10. Verse 7 says, Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Eight, all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. 
Because they didn't come through the door. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. If any man enter through Christ, he enters through me. He comes through his word. He comes through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. In other words, inside there was discovered an unsaved man. So this is for the saved. This is for the invited. How dare you come in? You were thrown out there where you were running away from. Brothers, it's not just a question of coming to church. It's not just a question of being a bench warmer. But you have to qualify by the way you enter in. By the way in the the channel through which you come in, come through the door. And the door is Christ. And Christ is the word. And he's the one who says, go tarry at Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Go wait there until the wedding garment is given you. Yes, I've preached to you. Yes, I've seen your good people. But now that I go, entrance to the kingdom is gained by the door. Go tarry at Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Hallelujah. 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 I pick up this quotation. God's provided way. Paragraph 22. Brethren, there is no big me. And little you. Then, when you come by the way of the door, and then he found a man back there that didn't have a wedding garment on. He come in some other way besides of the door. And Jesus said, friend, why are you, what are you doing here? And he was speechless. And you try to climb up your own moral step ladder or by some creed of some church. Rather, you are going to find yourself the same way. In other words, it won't take your morals for you to be in the same It won't take your goodness. It won't take how much you have started the message. It doesn't take your office as a pastor, your office as a trustee. That's that's why right here he says you try to take the step ladder of your morals. I'm a good person. I have never committed adultery. I have never stolen. I have never cursed. So I have to be in. That's not the qualification. The qualification is passed right at the door. Are we together, my brother, my sister? So he says you don't come in by the way of your morals. By the way of your own righteousness. Your self-esteem. Ah, uh, no, brother. It's something that that he gives you as you enter in. That's what matters. What matters when they enter the door, the door Rata I will pinde. enter through the roof. That just goes to show you are not elected. But the elect, elected of God, foreordained of God, unto eternal life, we come by the channel. Now, and you try to climb, oh, okay, uh, you try to climb up through your moral uh, step ladder. He says, every man that comes by the door is going to get the same robe. Do you see what makes brothers the same? You don't end up with a big me, small you. Oh, I dress better than anybody else. Oh, I, I, I'm so poor. I can't. No, 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 brother. When you get at the door there, you are worked on. 
you are dealt with. That's why now you see Brother Abraham says, a brother dressed in a tuxedo suit embraces a brother who is dressed up in overalls. In other words, you are no longer differentiated by what's on the outside, but it's what's in the inside. It disregards all other things. Hallelujah. Your brother, you can embrace him without any conscience. Because something that's in you is also in him. You feel you are one. There is no barrier between you and him. A brother in a tuxedo suit can embrace a, a brother in overalls. Then you begin to see, brother, in this faith, the emphasis is not what you own down here. It's not the clothes you own here. Yes, they are all right. It's not the cars you own here. Yes, they are all right. It's not the houses you own here. But yes, they are all right. It's not the money you own here. Yes, it's all right. But it's what you own out there. What Brother Abraham said to that rich man, he says, you look here, Billy, I've got estates all over. I employ over a thousand people. I own the bank in town. So that man went on and on and on. He say, and when he finished, Brother Branham says, yes, it's okay what you own, I've seen. But how much do you own up there? From here up there, how much do you own? He was speechless. And at some point, then he says, I'm not worried about who will take me down there in the grave. Whether I'm buried or not, I'm not worried about, about being buried. But I'm worried about being resurrected. Even if I'm buried in a one million casket, I'm buried in a one million suit, and I will not be in the resurrection. What does it matter? But though I am dressed in rags, though I am, I, I am not buried in a coffin, but someday when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, because I own something up there, I will be resurrected. Your resurrection is not based on the material things that you have. Yes, they are alright to make life a little easier. But that's not your entire. That's not what you base your faith on. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You see that, my brother, my sister, it's good to own all those things for life to be easy. But my brother, I would rather own estates out there. I would rather own millions and millions out there, my brother. That's what will count when someday your stammering lips will lie down in the grave. Oh, my brother, waiting for the resurrection morning. And my brother, it doesn't matter whether you are a beggar, whether you are bad or good. But if you ended in by that, waiting down, you will be there in the resurrection. Amen. Now, every man that comes by the door is going to get the same robe. You won't enter in without the robe. Bad or good. Morally evil or morally good. The qualification is not on that. But it's on what happens at the door. You get the same robe. That robe the prophet says. That ro and that robe is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Every man pays the same price. Hallelujah. He says that robe for the waiting commander is the Holy Spirit. And he says every man pays the same price. That man that ended and was found not with the robe says, man, how do you find yourself here? In other words, you didn't 
didn't pay the price. You didn't pay the price. You enter in by the price. And the price was paid by Jesus Christ. Who is the door? And you have to come through the door. And him who paid the price is the one to dress you up. Is the one to give you the Holy Ghost. He paid the price. So good or evil, bad or good, you become the same when you receive the Holy Spirit. Now, your invitation had to be examined before given a robe. Then you come back, go back to the laws of adoption where a child is to be under tutors. So, I pick it up. Things to be of 65. Now, the bridegroom has to finish the robes. He has to finish them. Therefore, there is a man stands at the door. And you come up with your invitation. He examines your invitation. And puts you on a garment, a robe. So there is an examination that takes place. Why he looks at your card. And when he qualifies and he says it's okay, you are invited. You have fulfilled all protocols. Then he puts on a garment. You see, the man did not have the garment. But the garment was given him. You didn't come having the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Ghost was given to you. Is the Lord. Is the entry point for you to go into the marriage supper. Those who have got a wedding garment. So he examines your invitation, puts on you a garment, a, garment, a robe. That some of them are rich. And some of them are poor. And some of them are different. But they all look alike. When they get these robes on, they all look alike. Have you ever seen even when you get the robe on, they all look alike. When they get these robes on, they all look alike. There is no one who is going to say, I've ordered my own expensive suit from Dubai. He says, no, you don't have to be different. You have to be the same. When people see you, they see the same. When people see you, they should see the same Holy Spirit. The same behavior. The same attitude towards the world. They all look alike when they get those robes. They all look alike. So you see, they have to come to the door. They had to be searched and looked at and to satisfy the requirements. That's why you see the prophet saying sons had to be under tutors and the father to be given a report how the son is doing. And finally, when the, when the tutor says your son is just doing right, Report after right, after report. And when the father is satisfied, he goes to adopt him. He fills him with the Holy Spirit. That's Galatians 4, verse 1 to 5. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, when you are born in your family, a child born there is an heir to the inheritance of the father. By virtue of being born in there, he is an heir. But, verse 1 says, that the heir, as long as he's a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. Born by your father, but at that stage, you cannot be a beneficiary of what's in your father. Account. Yes, yes, yes. You cannot be in a beneficiary of what's in the 
granary of your father. You have to qualify first. So you can be a recipient as an heir. Are we together? That's why I say this morning, I don't just want to be a child of God. I don't just want to be a good believer. I don't just want to enjoy fellowship. But I want to be an adopted son. I want to qualify for what belongs to me. I want to be an heir. I want to go through the rigorous process. I want to be vetted at the door. So I enter in with the rock. So I enter in with the Holy Spirit. Are we together? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he says right there, you don't, a, a, a son who is an heir being born is not different from a servant because he doesn't have access to it because he's a child. But verse 2 is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Hallelujah. From zero age, he's being tutored. Oh, by tutors and governors found by the father to teach fivefold ministry tutoring you from a tender age coming up to a time of adoption. Even so, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. That's why it says, go call the bad and the good. We were under bondage, waiting for the time appointed. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. And what did he say? Saying, John, I am the door. All those who came before me were thieves and robbers. But now I show you the way. You end up in through me. So he came to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. So Brother Abraham tries to show and dramatize that story. So when you are born in the house of your father, all that belong, all that of the father belongs to you. You are an heir. But you don't automatically assume heirship. You go through tutorship by tutors and governors. He says, the father finds himself good tutors to teach you and they'll be giving reports from time to time. And when the father is pleased, then what happens? He adopts you. This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear he, him in public. There is a public proclamation that this boy has become of age. Now, Zino. his signature is as good as my signature. signature yake yango yango. I took just snippets of quotations from different messages. I'll just read continuously, but it's from different messages. Says, but now when this child was born, he became a son. The very moment he was born in the family, you are a son when you are born in the family. It accords you the status of a son. That child was, say, a boy. He was an heir, of course. But before that child was fully an heir of all these things, that his father had, before he came into power, he was first put under a tutor. And this tutor raised this son. The tutor had to bring word to the father how the son was progressing. Now yet he was the heir of all things. But yet he didn't come into legal possession until there was a ceremony and he had fully done that which was right and was a worthy one. He was a son but not yet an heir. In the family, you are just a son. But you have to 
you'll be taught, so you'll become an heir. Are we together, my brother, my sister? Sonship should lead you to heirship. It's like a man who has been invited. Since I will be going for a wedding. Oh, brother, will be eating lots of chicken. There is lots of food. There is ice cream. You have not entered into the marriage supper as yet. But you know what's inside there. Theoretically, you know what's there. But not until you enter in. That's when you enjoy the supper. But if you don't enter in, it will end up. But you will not see the reality. In my, my father, there's got a lot of money in the bank. There's got this and that. But before you are, if you are not given that way to sign, that man who wrote in the bank you know what was prepared. You saw the chickens being slaughtered. Those three were the one dressing the chickens. You saw the spices being bought. You saw tents and chairs being made ready. Yes, everything you know. But if you fail to secure the gun, the gun those things will be Those who end up in Batsira, the Lord your Chedu, That's our Christian Do not end it by Chipinde just being. Let's enter in into the marriage no supper. Because blessed are they who end into the marriage supper. Others who remain Others in the But I'm saying this morning, I want to be one of them who shall end into the marriage supper. I'm coming this day even with the hardness of the message. Even with the hardness of the message. I am standing at that door. Christ is the door. The message is the the word is moving my death in this world. Well. The thinking of this world. The last of this world. It is moving all the anger of this world. It is moving all the selfishness of this world. It is moving all the this world. My brother, this command is being given to me. Then you said, enter it to Joseph the Lord. Enter into the place of the Lord. Everything you have about the marriage supper, you will be a beneficiary. Because if you enter through the door, you have been cleaned, you have been examined. You have been asked, you have been cleaned. Now a robe has been put on you. Brother, I have seen the people who have been put on you. Now a robe has been put on you. Have you ever seen those who are wearing gowns? Those who are wearing gowns. Have you ever seen them being asked for a gown? Have you ever seen them being asked for a gown? Have you ever seen them being asked for a gown? They will be wearing the wedding garment. They will come with the wedding garment. Now, the wedding garment is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I have to move fast. I just, I'm just about to finish now. The wedding garment is, 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 is your... Uh, uh, the wedding garment is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's what gives you access to what's inside. The ten virgins, they were all laboring to enter into the wedding supper. To enter with the master. But why others went in, others not? Was the difference of having oil or not having oil? Are we together? So the wedding garment is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's what gives you access to what's inside that has been prepared and reserved for you. And outside of entering in, you are just imagining 
You are just talking about it. You are just singing about it. You are just preaching about it. And you are not a beneficiary. So what are we saying? We want to enter into the reality of what we have been called for. Of what we have been preaching all these years for. We want to enter right in there. We don't want to remain into outer darkness. We have preached so much about it. We have read so much about it. We have dreamt so much about it. But we are saying at this point in our Lord, we want to end it. When the saints go marching in, Lord, I want to be in that number. I want to be in that number. Help me, Lord. I want the wedding coming. I want that special covering. I want that special anointing. I want that special revelation. Hallelujah. I want to enter in. Brother Bram says in the Revelation chapter 4 of the Revelation series, paragraph 103, all oh, listen to this. Then if the wedding garment is, is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, how are we going to be, rep to be represented any other way? The devil will let you do all other things. Preach as hard you can. Do all the rites of Christianity. But he will keep you away from the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because he knows without it, you are not an heir. An heir, I love Shona. An heir, dear, and no Chanaka. An heir is the one who 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 is the being an heir, then he said, I have tried to I have tried to I have examined I have examined it. 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 Every promise in the book is now his. He can have access. He can sign in the bank. And I say, Amen. Hallelujah. And I no longer fear for him. Because his son has been adopted. And I no longer fear for him. But this child has wept him. Some of the things which you cry for. Yes. They are trying. Tri which God has allowed on you. But there are reports which are going to you the Your son has not been married. Your child has not been married. Something has happened. Another thing has happened. Another thing again has happened. Then he said that. Before it's sealed, prophet Ajay Paris and Nogusat are not preaching about this. Kunonzi, you are not going to pick up. Those who have been there, who try to examine, it. they will shake it. Just to make sure that nothing is loose. When they see something loose, they will remove and pick up. God doesn't want to see loose feathers in our lives. He doesn't want to see loose talking, loose behavior, loose dressing. Those things have to be tightened up. As the word is being preached, and everything is in its place. Then what does he say? That to just say, I'm happy with your child. He listens to you. He behaves well. He doesn't complain. He doesn't murmur. He works tirelessly. Regardless of what temptation, he is always there for you. He says, Bring him up. He takes him to a higher place. Before all people, he says, Hear ye, all people, this day, this is my beloved daughter, this is my beloved son. Hear ye him, he fills him with the Holy Spirit. From that
that day on, when he talks of the promises of God, it's not just he is saying, he becomes a partaker of the divine promises of God. A partaker. He is now inside. He has access to rice. Access to Polone. Access to Sadza. Access to chicken. But at the same time, he's having access to that. Of the promises that was promised. There are some people outside there who are just smelling this nice smell of food. Talking about the chickens that were being the Undurwa. Talking about the eggs that went for the wedding. But they are not partakers. They are only talkers. Oh, my brother, my sister. May this message now with you move to a phase where you are a partaker of the promises of God. Where you see those promises being fulfilled in your life. You say, this promise is for me. I want to see it fulfilled. This healing is for me. I want to see it fulfilled. This victory is for me. I want to see it fulfilled. This deliverance is for me. I want to see it fulfilled. Why? Because you are now inside. Hallelujah. Entering through the door. Are we together? Amen. So he says, if the first, he says, how are we going to be represented in any way? So then if the wedding garment is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If the first church age had to come by the door, that is through Paul there, uh, 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 preaching Christ. Christ Jesus, be baptized into the name of Jesus Christ, receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, to put on the wedding garment. How are we coming any other way? Only other way to enter in. I'll be picking up from following messages, starting from what happens as we go in the rapture. Events that will take place. Because that's what we are preparing for any time now. What will transpire? Oh, brother, going to the marriage supper. So he says now, uh, 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 if you come by the Methodist, by the Baptist, by the Pentecost, or any other denomination, you will be bound and cast out into outer darkness. You've got to come by Jesus Christ the way that goes the truth and the light. So it's not Methodist, it's not Baptist. It's those who receive the Holy Spirit. The wedding garment is your spiritual dress. You dress different for that occasion. You can't be casual about it. It's not the usual dress. And it's a spiritual dress. Which is the same when it's received by you or dressed into that one. It will produce the same behavior. It will produce the same acts. It's the acts of the Holy Ghost in the Christians. Producing a life that's Christ-like. And from the time that you are invited, to st you, you start to prepare for it. Then, what does he do when he gives me the Holy Spirit? That's blasphemous names of 62. He sets you out in a separate place to yourself. Adoption. Marks you. Mark of the beast and the mark of the Holy Spirit. When you reject the Holy Spirit, he says automatically you take the mark of the beast. He says, he marks. Filling with the Holy Spirit, he marks. Uh, 
See, you are a different person then. You are not of the world. No more. You are clothed different. You are dressed different. Not this outside dress. No, no. You don't have to be odd and particular, peculiar. And collar turned around. And a long ceremony like, no, no. You don't do that. You dress physically like this. It's the spiritual dress that counts. And the uniform of your church is the spiritual dress that counts. Then Brother Bram says, now maybe I'll come back to that. No one will go in the rapture without the Holy Spirit. Brother, why we still have time? If you know you don't have the Holy Ghost, we are stretching forth yet another plea. It's time to say, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Reaction to an action of 59. You know that no one will be in the rapture without the Holy Ghost. They will be the sleeping virgin. The rest of the dead live not for a thousand years. God has promised you are going in the rapture by election. She is the cause of election. Those who are elected know what to do. Like Jacob, he knew he was a trickster. But he knew to set his life right. To have a right to the inheritance. I need the birthright. It's your birthright. By virtue of your birth, by virtue of your adoption as a son, and the, you will not be lost, but the Holy Spirit filled bride will go in the rapture. <laughs> Those who remain, some of them will be virgins. Because all of them were virgins. That's where the election comes. Because somebody said, somebody said, somebody said, somebody said, somebody said, but the Holy Ghost filled bride will go in the rapture. The rest of them will come through the judgment. Why? That is through the tribulation. You miss it. Because you don't have the wedding night. You know that no one will be in the rapture without the Holy Ghost. There will be the sleeping virgin. The rest of the dead lived not for a thousand years. Kunomutswa chete pangwa ya rapture a wano pinda mukuputwa neva cha shandu wava ninge wari wa peyu wami wano ramba wari umakuwa wazomuka pakutonga. I close with this quotation. Where Brother Ram says, in the seventh seal of 63, a part of it he says, we see the bride taking on the form, putting the wedding garment on, making ready we can see the lights flickering. We know that we are at the end. Do huh? you see we are at the end? When we see the bride taking form, when we see the bride taking, putting on the garment, Government can be bought without being worn. It 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 can 
It's now opening a suitcase. It's now wearing a suitcase. It has reached the time. The waiting supper has reached. Taking form. The bride is now taking In other words, the bride is now taking the bride is being filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Every person is filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Every person is filled the as he a has won him, but he will not see wadi. that in his life. Church of the living God, may God help us in this hour to get ready for the wedding supper. And that which makes us ready is to put on the wedding garment. It's not far now, my brother, that we are ready for the wedding, for the marriage supper. Mabiko the lamb. And we say, even so, come, Lord Jesus. We are in churches. Do you say that this morning? Do you believe that this morning? Are you getting ready for the marriage supper? Can our kunji wapita? Can our kunji wapita? Kanava ku divo